Today we're unboxing my brand new Courtney doll that I just got directly from American Girl. So let's like totally get into it. Okay, I'm gonna cool it with a valley girl speak because I grew up in the rural south, so in the 80s, I talked more like this. I have wanted Courtney for a while now, but she had already been released several months before I actually started collecting dolls as an adult. So I knew she would be around for a while, and I was really focused on collecting vintage items from the era of when I was a child, so 1986 to 1993, roughly, Pleasant Company dolls. And so I just kind of put Courtney on the back burner, knowing that I would get her someday, but I was just so focused on vintage stuff that I really didn't buy a whole lot of brand new stuff from American Girl. So yeah, let's go ahead and get her out of the box and add her to the collection. Before we go any further, I just wanted to remind you that I have a Patreon account where you can actually watch an extended edit of this unboxing where we'll go further into depth into more of my opinions and more of the unboxings and everything. So if you really like long winded videos about dolls, my Patreon might be a great place for you. There's also some really cool stuff like shop discounts and early access to new things in my doll shop. So be sure to check it out. There's something for everybody there. All right, that's my sales pitch. Let's get Courtney out of the box. So I actually had a quick peek at her before turning all the lights on and starting filming this video because something was telling me that I was going to get a doll with asymmetrical eyes. I don't know why. I just was like, I'm going to get a doll that looks like this. So I wanted to have a quick peek at her before getting all this set up and getting ready to film and then just opening the doll and being like, oh, I hate you. Bye. So I think I got a good one. Her eyes, I think, are a little bit asymmetrical, but I'm going to let you maybe help me decide if I'm going to keep this one or not. I'm leaning towards yes, but I really want to know what you think if this is a good one or not. But yeah, one thing I do love about American Girl right off the bat is how easy it is to unbox their dolls because I have unboxed Barbies before and especially the new ones, there's like a thousand pieces of tape and twist ties and plastic and it just, it takes me like 15 minutes just to get the doll out of the box. So I really appreciate a doll that, you know, you can kind of dive in and play really quick. It doesn't take you 20 minutes of frustrating just to get, or 20 minutes of frustration to get her out of the box. But yeah, as you can see, she comes with a book, which I love so much. I, I know that they've changed the format a little bit over the years, but I still appreciate that the historical dolls come with stories and books. And it's just such an important part of bringing the dolls to life. I'm glad that the books are still a thing. So I definitely will read this book. Probably not today, but um, you know, in the next few months, I will probably sit down and read through here because like I said, I was alive in the 80s. And so even though I was only two years old in 1986, I still remember the 80s very vividly. So I'm definitely looking forward to reading this and seeing how much it takes me back. Get the plastic piece off that held the book in place. And I'm going to give you an up close look at her just because it's always fun to kind of see them really minty fresh and brand new in the box. But yeah, right off the bat, I don't think she looks too terrible. I do think that her eyes are a tiny bit asymmetrical. So I really do want your advice if you think if this is a good Courtney or if I can maybe roll the dice and return her and try and get one with maybe completely perfectly symmetrical eyes. But I did get her sunglasses because again, I just thought I don't know why. I just feel like the universe was telling me I was going to get an asymmetrical eye doll. So I went ahead and bought her sunglasses just in case. And so we can cover them up if we don't really like them that much. All right, this time I'm going to try and take her out of the box without cutting these little plastic garment tag ties or whatever they're called. I think that's how I did it with my 35th anniversary dolls. All right, her ankles and arms are all deboxed. All we have to do now is take her neck strap off. Ah, she's, her hair is caught, I think. All right, she's free. Ooh, those are some ugly leg warmers. Just kidding. Actually, oh, I just ripped them. Like I said, I'm trying to keep everything mint, so I'm going to be careful taking these off too, just to try not to rip them any further than I already just did. All right, we have Courtney out of the box finally. And again, just being able to hold a doll like this, again, that's brand new that I can do this with and not feel like I'm getting dirty is so awesome. Yeah, I'm just kind of giving her a once over just to make sure there's no like very glaringly obvious factory defect, but as, as of right now, I can't see anything that looks like it might be an issue. Her arms look like they work and they're not too loose. These legs might be a little on the loose side, I have to say, but she'll stand fine. You know, I've had some dolls that have really, really loose limbs and they still stand. So I'm not going to be terribly picky about that. 
Oh, I was going to say it didn't look like she had underwear on, but I have learned through this channel uh, that you're supposed to put underwear on underneath tights. And I guess that's totally obvious. I've just never worn a pair of tights in my life. So, you know, you learn something new every day. But yeah, at first glance here, I don't see any defects. So I think we can continue with the unboxing without having to give American Girl a call and begging them for a new doll. Okay, now is the time for everybody's favorite part, and that is removing the hairnet. And I always get so nervous doing this because if a doll has a bad wig, then the entire doll is trash to me. So let's pray for a good wig unveiling. You know what? I'm gonna try and do this so I can enjoy it in real time too. I have to say, like I said, I don't often get a brand new doll. So taking a hairnet off is something I get to do like twice a year maybe. So I wanna savor this moment too. So I'm gonna try and get close enough to the camera so you can't see all of my pores, but we can enjoy the unveiling of her wig together. Maybe I'll just censor my face out if I look really terrible. <laughs> Let's see if I can find a good place to grab it. Because as soon as I do this, I'm going to end up yanking something off. I feel like we want to start at the front. So I'll take this off. All right. All right. I feel like I might have done a totally bad job filming that. But I did get to enjoy taking the wig uh, or the hairnet off. So, yep. So far, nothing crazy has fallen out. It's not like a huge chunk of hair fell off of her head. So that's a good sign. And I've heard that her hair, actually I've seen that her hair can get super duper frizzy. So I want to be careful not to like overly zhuzh this because I don't want it to look teased. At some point I thought I was going to get a Courtney and actually just completely uh, straighten her hair and then crimp it so that she would have crimped hair. But the as time goes on, I, I always feel like I just want to have a doll be as true to the original as possible. So I think at some point in the future, I might actually regret it if I restyle her hair. So if I do that, I probably will get a second Courtney to do it with. So that I might do. Okay, yeah, so all I'm doing right now is I'm just grabbing her hair like sort of all together to try and keep it from getting like brushed out and then just doing this to kind of like lift the curls and separate them. I don't know if that's the correct way to do it. That's just what my instincts are telling me. And I know this is probably unavoidable, but I I have seen this before too, is it looks like there are some like chunks that kind of fly away like this, which I don't personally like, but I will only be displaying this doll from the front. So it's not a big deal if the back doesn't look immaculate, but yeah, again, the, I know that American Girl dolls are super high quality and this might just be the limits of what you can do in terms of like the quality of hair, but I definitely see what like looks like dry ends here. I don't know if that's in focus or not. But if you can see that, that actually reminds me of a lot of the vintage dolls I get that are played with. So I have to say her hair is like a little bit frizzy and I don't know if it's going to bug me or not. Again, I don't have a lot of experience with Courtney. So if you have her, can you let me know if this is normal for Courtney or if I got one that shouldn't have passed the quality control inspection? I have to say, I don't want her to have like a huge like head of voluminous hair. So I'm not going to like just spend forever and ever and ever trying to like get the most volume I can out of her. I just want to... Yeah, oh, I can tell. If you have a child, I bet you she basically has a head full of frizz. Like, it's probably a huge rat's nest by now. Because even just trying to loosen up the curls a little bit to make her hair look fuller, I feel like flyaways are just, like, happening one after the other. So I might actually have to spend some time recurling her hair. But I will worry about that later. For now, I just kind of want to get her looking like she would if you went into the store and saw her on display. I think it's interesting that she has a cowlick. I don't know if that's part of her story, but I do think that it's part of Mary Ellen's story. And I know that there was a lot of criticism that Courtney was really, really similar to Mary Ellen, but I can't make the comment on that because I haven't seen Mary Ellen in person. And probably if I get her, it's going to be like well into the future. She's not high on my priorities list, but yeah, her bangs, I have to say, are like, I wish they were a little bit more voluminous, I have to say. Again, this might be just an issue of me having a brand new doll out of the box that I haven't spent time with, but in the 80s, bangs were way bigger than this. I'm talking like, I remember girls and women would have bangs that like literally were basically like a sun visor. So these, I think, are probably not full enough for historical accuracy, but they are cute. So I'm not really that mad about it. But yeah, she's got a little cowlick here, which I think a lot of people have thought this was a defect. But to me, I actually, I don't know that I mind it because I have a cowlick too. And so when I like try and look at her without it, I think it, the cowlick actually adds to her character. So I think that was a good choice. And again, I like that it brushes over to the side because that's kind of how my hair does too. So it's nice when you can relate to your doll, even in the smallest of ways. But yeah, I have to say, I'm not like crazy happy with the 
fullness of her wig. I feel like the Hoffman twins had more hair than this and their hair wasn't even curled and their hair looked fuller right out of the box. So again, this doll might have been manufactured like a year or two ago, so who knows? But overall, I like her. But again, I think this wig is where I feel like I'm seeing some quality issues, so I don't love that. As I'm sitting here kind of getting to know this doll, it is so obvious that they used Stephanie Tanner as one of their main inspirations for Courtney because that's all I can see is little Stephanie Tanner from Full House with this haircut and everything. That's I can't imagine there was any other character that had more of a prominent role in the inspiration for Courtney than her. And I love that because I used to love Full House when I was a kid. I would always want to watch it. Like when I remember like the new episodes coming out and I, I think it was on TGIF at some point. I can't remember, but I would just remember watching Full House and Family Matters and all those shows uh, on the weekends or like at the end of the week. So that's like a fun memory too that Courtney kind of brings up. All right, so I'm just gonna give you a quick up close look at Courtney now that I have her wig cap off and everything. And she has like the trademark Giganzo tag on her scrunchie, which I know we can't do anything about. It's part of the laws here. And I guess it probably other countries too, where, you know, you have to say where something was made. And I actually am surprised they don't have to put more info than that on there. But I'm guessing the only reason they're, these huge tags are on here is because of the laws. They can't sell them without it. So we just kind of have to ignore that and maybe hide it under her, curl her thin curly hair. Here's the back of her hair so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. I feel like it actually looks better on camera than it does in person and maybe I'm just being like overly critical. I do have to say she is really cute and I am looking forward to getting her dressed. And I really do love this meat outfit. I have to say again this goes back to what I always talk about in terms of quality for American Girl dolls is one of the most important things about their quality is how thick their clothes are, how many layers they have, how many pieces come with them. And she's got a lot of pieces that come with her. She has two tops that are layered. She's got her jean skirt, which is very, very good quality. Actually, a couple years ago, I initially bought her jean pants or her jeans and her jean jacket. I actually have two pairs of each of those and I really, really love them. They've kind of been staples in my collection as far as like dressing some of my dolls in more modern looks. And this is that same material and it is super high quality denim. It, denim. <laughs> it's super high quality denim and it is basically the same quality as human clothes, I believe. So I really love this. And again, the tights feel like they're really thick and these pleather shoes, which again, very, very 80s. I think the quality on these is actually exceptional too. So I have to say I'm more impressed with the quality of the outfit than I am with the actual doll. So that's kind of interesting. But yeah, I have to say the doll has met my expectations for the most part. I would say really my only complaint is I feel like the hair doesn't look amazing right out of the box, but I have to say it's a heck of a lot better than you would see on a Barbie out of the box. So, you know, I still think this is a high quality doll, but Again, I'm I'm gonna try to stop complaining about her hair, but the hair is like one of the most important parts about a doll for me. So if it's not great, then you know that is a big detractor for me. So I will probably again have to spend a little bit more time with this to get it the way I want it. And who knows, maybe if I really don't like it after spending a couple of hours on it, I might just straighten it and crimp it. All right, so let me show you some of the rest of the stuff I got because I got a decent amount of stuff for her, including her meat accessories, because I just love layered clothes on dolls and all the extra accessories and stuff. So I think it's gonna be really fun to get her accessories on and just see that much more detail. So the first thing I'm gonna open is actually her meat accessories because that makes the most sense. I just could not pass up the opportunity to have the lip smacker and the Walkman on. I mean, those are such iconic 80s pieces. There was no way I was gonna get Courtney and not get these. So I'm gonna show you the box really quick just so you can experience it with me. All right, let's take these out of the box. All right, we've got her bracelets. Nothing terribly exciting about these, but I will use them because they're just another detail. I'm not sure why they put black in there. I might leave the black one out, we'll see. But actually it will be fun to have this for the mix and match because you might only want to use one or two bracelets depending on what outfit you have. So it's nice to have options. I'm glad that they put four of these in here. And she does have some black pieces in her collection. So it will be nice to have a black bracelet. What else is in here? Her button. I think this says Marine for Mayor. I can't tell because the sticker is covering it up, but this isn't like a terribly exciting detail. I mean, it obviously makes sense with her story, but uh, it's not like the whole reason I bought these meat accessories. So we'll cut that part short. This is probably actually my favorite accessory for this whole set. It's this 
Does this say Bonnie Bell and everything on here? It just says Peach Lip Smacker, but I'm pretty sure Bonnie Bell was the name of the company that made these. I just remember being able to go to Kmart, and even though I was a little boy, I mean, I had chapped lips all the time because nobody taught me that drinking water keeps your lips from being chapped. So, you know, I was a little dry mouth Southern boy running around, so I needed chapstick too. And I usually would be able to sneak like a Bonnie Bell Lip Smacker. And so this definitely brings me back. And this one is peach, but I would always want the ones that were like, soda flavored and stuff so i remember having like a dr pepper lip smacker um it would, might be fun to actually get a few of these and see if i can customize them to be different flavors we'll see i don't know but i love this so much and we've got a cassette tape which obviously goes with the cassette tape case and I feel like there have been so many unboxings of Courtney. I don't need to go over every tiny little detail of these, uh, you know, because again, people have probably been watching these for two years, but I just wanted to experience them with you. So hopefully this isn't like terribly boring. Okay, this is another really amazing piece in this set is this, it just says stereo. I don't think they could get the rights to call this a Walkman, but this is what, like we called this thing a Walkman in the eighties and nineties where you played the cassette tape. But I feel like my audience is mostly people that at least know what this is and don't think that music always came off a of phone. And then again, another really great piece in this set is the headphones that go with this Walkman. So I am so excited to put this on her. And this might actually help cover up the fact that her hair is a little bit flat. All right, first we'll put her bracelets on, I think, because they'll they'll probably stay on the easiest. They look like they'll be secure, so I'll take these out. I'll even put the black one on too, because why not? Yeah, these go on pretty easy. They don't seem like they wanna break, but I have to say, this looks like it might actually leave a mark on her. I don't know if I will leave these on indefinitely, but for the video, we'll put them on. Because I'm so neurotic, I'm trying to put these on in the order that they were <laughs> in the packaging, but I'm sure that doesn't matter. All right, we'll put the green one on. I'm pretty sure I just gave her a shine mark doing that, so that's not great, but I'll live. All right, there are her bracelets. They're, I have to say, they're on pretty tight, so like I said, I have a feeling that those will not stay on her. We'll see. All right, next up, we'll do her pin. I do love that it goes on super easily, and obviously they can't put real pins in things anymore due to safety issues, but it's so funny to be putting what is an actual pin on a doll. This is actually a little bit difficult uh, to put one on with like just a little clip like this. Whereas like when you go and look at the old collection, like I'm specifically thinking of Felicity's birthday outfit with like the pinner apron. They just sent you straight, <laughs> like straight pins. So. You know, I can imagine there were a lot of pricked fingers back in the day, but I think this is probably a good update considering that these are technically for children. Sometimes those children are 38 years old. All right, get her outfit fixed. Okay, that's her button on. All right, I'm gonna need two hands to get this out of the packaging, but this is the lip smacker that I'm so excited about. So this has that same mechanism where it's just like double tied. It's like Addie's necklace that can be kind of difficult to put on, but this one actually slides a bit easier. So this shouldn't be too terribly difficult to put on her. Oh my gosh, I feel like every time I even look at this doll, I'm getting more frizz on her hair. Like, don't be surprised if you see this doll in the background in a couple months and she has a completely new like wig or <laughs> her hair is like, like crimped. All right, I have to do this out of frame, hang on. All right, let's take the cap off and see if it works. It's plastic. I mean, I knew that already, but still. All right, that's probably the first and last time I'll ever do that. Sorry, Courtney, you're gonna have to have dry lips like I did in the 80s. I'm gonna take this cassette tape case out of the packaging because I wanna have everything on display, but I think the tape actually goes in the Walkman and I'd rather have it in there. So I'm just gonna quickly show you. You can pause if you wanna read. I think this is all like fake songs and stuff. Does this open? I think this opens. Yep, it snaps open. That's really cool. This is such a great detail. And I know this stuff can kind of be hard to make on a one third scale, but this is so, so cool. Again, I remember cassette tapes and this is the kind of cases they came in. All right, and here's the actual tape that came in. It says Courtney's Mix 1. Did they have other versions of this? Did, like, Because I know she has like a boom box you can buy as an accessory and it comes with tapes. Or, or, are there like mixes one or two, three, and four or something that come with a boom box? I can't remember, but here is the one that comes with the meat accessories. Yeah, I need to immediately put that in this Walkman or it's gonna get lost. I love that it has like a clear strap so she can actually hold it on her hand. Weirdly enough, like a lot of American Girl accessories even still are really hard to display with a doll because they, they can't hold them obviously because they don't have articulated hands. So you kind of have to just like take a clear elastic or something and strap it to their hands. But this comes with one built in. So that's really great. She can hold this. 
Now, I believe these go in, I always thought these looks like they were upside down and yeah so this is like authentically correct it looks it always looked odd to me that these tapes went in this side up because again the writing is like upside down when you put it in but that's actually how they were in the 80s and 90s that's how they work so that's not a defect or an oversight that's authentic and the last thing from her meat accessories are these super awesome headphones and Again, this, when we're talking authenticity, if you really want to nitpick, you know, I remember the 80s being not everything being like super bright colors like this. I'm sure you could get headphones that like had pink and teal, uh, what do you call these like earphones on them, but all the ones I had were black. So it's fun to actually have these, but again, this is probably a little bit of a stretch. I don't know if you had colorful headphones in the 80s, let me know, but I'm glad they did them this way because I think black ones would have been just a little bit plain for a doll, especially if a kid's playing with it because toys are so brightly colored these days. I feel like that's one of the big reasons American Girl is kind of trying to fudge. I shouldn't say fudge the truth, but that, like when they're picking things for historical dolls, they're really trying to add as much color as you can. I mean, obviously Be Forever was the big change that they made that everybody was like, what? So... You know, I understand why, because they're competing against major toy brands that everything is brightly colored with huge eyes and everything. And it's just, you know, the muted color palettes and from like the historical line and everything just aren't as popular with kids. So I get that they have to make changes. So these normally are adjustable. I mean, I guess headphones are still a thing, so I'm not trying to like turn this into like back in my day when we had headphones. But let me see if I can get these on her with one hand. Yeah, let me hop out of frame and put these on her head really quick. All right, I got them on her head. She looks so cute with these. This, def I have to say, this, that really, really helps with, like, the feeling of the flat hair. It doesn't bother me anymore that her hair isn't, like, full Stephanie Tanner. So, yeah, the head, definitely, if you feel like the hair looks a little bit too flat for your taste and you're thinking about getting Courtney, get these headphones. It makes a big difference. All right, I'm going to try and wrap this around because this cord is, like, very stiff and it's wanting to go crazy. All right, that looks a little odd, but if I don't, like, it basically tries to pop the headphones off her head. So I think that's how I'm going to have them for now. So that is Courtney in her meat outfit with her meat accessories straight out of the box. And, yeah, I have to say, every time I get a brand new doll and get, open her, I'm like, oh, I really like this doll. And then I take the meat accessories out and put them on the doll. I'm like, I am so glad I got the meat accessories because it just adds so many more details and layers to the doll and again American Girl dolls and Pleasant Company dolls are really high quality dolls and they're expensive obviously and you know you really want to feel like you're getting your money's worth out of the doll and I feel like getting the meat accessories for the dolls really just makes such a big difference in being able to layer them and then just feeling like they're higher quality than something you might buy at Target or Walmart for a lower price so I really do appreciate having all of these extra little details on Courtney. I think she looks so cute. While I have you, if you're still here, I would love it if you would hit the like button on the video and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. I'm really trying to grow this channel into something really big and help people just chill and talk about dolls and maybe learn a thing or two about Pleasant Company history. So yeah, I would love it if you would join me for the ride and hit the subscribe button. So I'm going to call that a video for today because I have a lot more stuff for Courtney and this video is already super long and I want to be able to go through everything and talk about it and enjoy it and experience it with you. So today's just going to be a video on Courtney and her meat accessories, which I have no regrets purchasing. I'm so happy she's in my collection now. So stay tuned for the next part where we are going to unbox some of the things from her mix and match. I cannot say that. I've tried to say that like five times now. The, we are going to unbox some things from her mix and max. I did it again. I can't say it. Mix and match collection. <laughs> We're going to unbox some things from her mix and match collection and put them on the dolls. So I hope you all stay tuned. And like I said, hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell and you'll be the first to know when that video goes up. Don't forget, if you want an extended version of today's unboxing, please join my Patreon at patreon.com slash I dream of Johnny. There are additional perks too, such as shop discounts and early access to new items in the shop. So please check it out. There's something for everyone there. And also don't forget to check out my shop, Johnny's Doll Shop, 
shop.com where I sell vintage Pleasant Company items and repair parts and accessories. There's a lot of stuff there and I've been adding new stuff basically weekly. So be sure to check it out. If you want even more doll content, be sure to check me out on TikTok and Instagram at I Dream of Johnny. And until next time, please like totally take care of yourself and I will like totally see you soon. <laughs> Bye for now. Thank you.